My name is Anjane. Um, I work at WTW on the client management team. I've been at WTW for um, a little over three years now, going on four years. And my role focuses on understanding what clients' needs are and connecting them to the right resources in our company to um, help help accomplish the things they want to accomplish. So non, non-traditional actuarial route, um, but really enjoying it. Aaron, do you want to go? Good afternoon, everybody. Aaron Bronson, based in Miami, Florida. Um, I've been with WCW a little over four years now. Uh, I wear many hats. So one, the main actuarial hat is uh, helping companies with their uh, employee benefits spend, total reward spend. So helping projecting costs uh, for different lines of coverages, medical, dental, vision, um, doing IVNR evaluations, um, not to get into the weeds, but things such as that and, and beyond that. Uh, running a team across the Southeast uh, as well, workflow management, efficiencies, operating efficiencies, things like that. So, which helps me talk about resumes because I see a lot of them in that other hat. So, look forward to talking to you all. Perfect. Thank you, Anjane. Um, so, on the next slide um, is just sort of an introduction of what we'll be talking about. Um, The importance of resumes are a lot of things that are listed here. So once you put um, on your resume that your education, your experience, how to get in contact with you, it gives you opportunity for um, getting a role that you want. It's very important to give employers an idea about how you fit the role that they're looking for. And then it gives you an end to say how you would fit. It gives you opportunity to get an interview and say, see how you would fit um, in the company that you're interviewing with. So it's, it's the very first step of finding a job and it's, it's really important to have a really good resume. So today we'll, um, on our agenda, we'll talk about um, resumes. We'll walk through a resume, then we'll talk about do's and don'ts um, that you wanna keep in mind as you're constructing your resume, as well as a cover letter if you so choose to do one. And then we'll talk a little bit about what WTW has to offer. And then we'll leave time at the end um, for students to have opportunity to ask questions. So on the next slide, we sort of jump right in. Um, What's sort of the most or most important, what do you need to have on your resume? Top, very at the very top, you wanna have your name, email and phone number there so that employers know how to contact you if they're interested in moving to the next step um, with interviewing you. And then you wanna have your city and state where you're located or just, I don't know, I guess, not everywhere has a state, but you know your location, so companies know where you are. It's coming, it's becoming like less and less relevant in the remote space. But certain, a lot of times, you do have to be in a certain country um, to to have a specific role. One thing is that you don't want to have your street address on your resume. That's because it's going to be passed around among so many people. You're going to be interviewing to a lot of jobs, or even if you only interview to one job, there's going to be likely a panel of people that are interviewing you. So anywhere between three to five people at minimum will have their resume, have your resume in front of them. So you don't need your street on address on there. It's not, you know, you just don't want to have it for your own privacy reasons. And then um, for an objective, um, I always say if you have space for an objective, you should put an objective. If you don't have space for it, just get rid of it. And we'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by that later on. Um, but if you want to include a, if you want to include a, an objective or you have sort of extra space on your resume and you want to be clear about what sort of role you're looking for, it's a really good tool to do that. Um, but if you don't have space for it, you don't need it. It's not, it's not a big deal if you don't have one. And it's something very general about what sort of role you're looking for, what kind of what you want to accomplish um, with your resume and with like what you're looking for right now. 
on the next slide um, is where also at the top you want to put your qualifications, things that qualify you for the role. So what education you're pursuing, um, you want to have your school as well as your GPA. A lot of systems where you um, upload your resume, there's an automatic sort of filtering process where if you don't have a certain GPA, you're automatically knocked out. Or if you don't have a GPA at all, you can be knocked out of the system. So make, it, make sure your GPA um, is included on in your resume. If your cumulative GPA is less than a 3.0, use your major GPA if that, if that one is higher. Um, use whichever one is higher and that's that's sort of fair game. Um, but if your major GPA is higher than your cumulative one, then you can use the major one, that still counts. Also make sure um, right at the top you have exams on there. So being an actuarial profession, exams are very important. It's gonna be one of the first things that you're asked, what exams have you taken? Um, put those right at the top, front and center. If you have never um, passed an exam, just put when you're next sitting for the exam. So if you're looking for an internship, you can say, you know, sitting for um, the P exam and when you're sitting for it. Um, but, to, but that shows sort of like your dedication to the profession and you're not just, you know, sort of randomly applying for actuarial roles that you have no idea um, what, what they're um, encompassing. And then also put your VEEs on there. Um, it's just helpful to know. It's not, if you don't have them, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. They're pretty easy to get. But if you do have them, you obtain them um, when you were in college, go ahead and add that on there. And then also put your credentials. So if you've already earned your, your ASA, your ACAS, um, you've earned your FSA, include that on your resume as well. So employers know where you are sort of in your exam journey. Does that make sense? If anybody has questions, feel free to interrupt me or stop me wherever. We want this to be sort of as helpful as possible. Or just drop it in the chat, either one. Raise your hand, use the raise hand emoji or feature I mean, um, and definitely ask your questions. They're definitely here for you all. As I always try to state, um, they're here, so take advantage. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. <laughs> so on our next slide, um, we get into the different types of resume. So there are three sort of main types of resumes and we'll go through all of them. Um, the first one is when you put your resume in chronological order. So when you get to the part where we were at the top of the resume, you had your name, you had your primary qualifications, and then you get into the experience, which is sort of the thick of the resume, you can put this in chronological order. Basically what that means is you list your most current role at the top, and then your roles um, in reverse chronological order, like sort of as they've happened, um, you'll put sort of like what jobs you worked and when, and you put the dates in there. So your, the, employee, the, the employer can see what jobs you held and when. Um, and this is a great option for people who have a consistent job history and a lot of experience. It's especially helpful if you, um, your most recent experience is sort of like your most relevant experience. So that could be like a data role or an analyst role, um, an internship, things like that you wanna highlight right at the top. So chronological resume would be perfect if you have really recent experience that's really um, applicable to the role that you're applying for. On the next slide is the functional resume. So this is where you will put your most relevant role at the, in, at the top and then put them put your um, positions that you've held in order of relevance to the job that you're applying for. So this is great if maybe you were in the actuarial profession um, and you left to do something else for a period of time, but you wanna get back into the actuarial profession again. Sort of use this sort of format where maybe, you know, you did a, a data analyst role and those skills are sort of still 
like you can still do them. You haven't forgotten everything that you learned. Put those sort of roles right at the top where you can really highlight why you're a good fit for the role. Um, and the time in which you got those skills doesn't really matter. Um, so use this, use this option if you have maybe a limited experience in the field that you're applying for. So like if you don't have a whole lot of actuarial experience, but you still want to get into the actuarial um, field, or maybe you do have actuarial experience, but you've been out of, out of the profession for five years, or maybe you never, you're a student and you've never, you know, been an actuary yet, and you, you're just looking for your very first internship. Highlight those sort of things that would make you the best fit for a role. So if you did any sort of like technical things or um, anything that sort of like will gave you the best skills that make you feel like you're the best fit for the job, those are the things that you want to put towards the top and then go in order to like for most relevant to least relevant. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> On the next slide um, is a combination re resume. So basically, if your most relevant experience is also your most recent experience, then include your um, include your roles in the order which you know which they happened, and it also happens to be the order that um, is most relevant to the job you're applying for. So. This is great for people who have, you know, been in the profession for a while or have dedicated or maybe a student, but you've done a lot of internships or a lot of things that can be still applicable to actuarial, even if you haven't had an actuarial job yet. This resume will work great for you. It, it's, it's sort of the best of both worlds. Okay. On the next slide, um, we talk a little bit more about, oh, it says my internet is unstable. Can you still hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Did I lose you guys? I think you yeah. Yep, I can hear you. Okay, we're here. Okay. You hear it? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay. So now we get into a little bit more of the content of your resume. So for each role that you've had, you'll want to put two to four um, bullets of like what, what you did in that role under each role that you've had. When you're writing your bullets, you want to be consistent. So the first sort of like tense you use, if you use present tense, if you use past tense, it should all be the same um, throughout your whole resume. So not just role specific, but whole resume specific. It makes it easier to read and easier to follow um, if you're using like a consistent like verbiage. I don't know if verbiage is the right word, but stay consistent with how you're, um, with how you're highlighting your experience. And then for the bullets that you write, you wanna be descriptive as possible and highlight the ways that you personally contributed to the success of the project or the company or what your role specifically was in the project that you worked on. Um, so you wanna, and also make sure you're highlighting what you did personally. So we know that we are individually just one piece of a project, but highlight your piece ra rather than the overall project. So the employer can understand what skills you have and what skills you bring to the table. And then you can talk about the successful outcome of the project if you so choose, um, but really try to focus on your, what you have to offer. Sorry, Morgan, did you say something? No, I did it, but oh. I was going, I was going to say that this is really good. So yeah, I, oh yeah, I, when I first did my resume, I had too much stuff on there. My, mine was like two to three pages and then. Somebody said that that was too much. So I was very grateful for that <laughs> advice. So I was just gonna say that, but yeah. Yeah, and a lot of times if you have, uh, well, it, it sort of depends on where you're at in your career. If you're early career, like I'm assuming a lot of you are, 
if you have a lot of things in your resume, the the hiring team is just not going to read it. Like they they don't have that much time. They have a lot of resumes coming in. Aaron, tell me if I'm lying, but <laughs> it's a long process and it's a lot of resumes. So if it's too long or too much going on, they just don't have the time to read it. Um, can you can you write to the last? I slide actually for... would look at it as a a negative if you're coming in for an entry level, you know, fresh out of college and your resume is longer than a page. I'm just, I'm just, no. <laughs> yes, I had to learn that. So, yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, what's, okay, so, um, yeah, we talked about highlighting the things that you specifically did for the project. And then we'll also talk about um, having some indication of your communication abilities. For every single role that you apply for, communication is going to be a huge part of what the hiring manager, what the team is looking for. You have to be able to communicate, um, especially for actuarial roles. We need to be able to communicate very technical concepts in a non-technical way. Um, so illustrating an example um, of when you've done that in your previous roles is going to be really important as well. Um, so you can see the last bullet says communicating results to leadership in presentations geared toward the appropriate audience based on levels, based on the level of their desire. Oh, I see it's a double level. Um, based on their desired level of detail and prior knowledge. So you wanna make sure you're talking to the right audience um, when you're communicating and they can, so they can understand what you're saying. If you have experience in that, highlight that um, in your resume as well. For not, for uh, technical roles, highlight your technical expertise. So if you have experience with SELF, you have experience with SQL, R, Python, all that sort of stuff, indicate how you use it in different roles. Um, so employers understand that you have that skill. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. On the next slide, um, last sort of thing that's going to go physically on your resume is your skills and participation. So to the extent that you're participating in IABA, if you've earned a scholarship from IABA, if you are a part of professional organizations at school, um, if you have leadership roles in those organizations, sort of all that stuff will also go on your resume, especially when you're looking for entry-level roles and Hiring managers don't have a lot to go on. They're going to be looking for you to have been participating in something and have some level of experience with leadership and working with the team and sort of giving direction. And again, being able to communicate, all that stuff is going to be important. So those, this is just more opportunity to highlight some of the stuff that you've been doing in college if you're still somebody who's coming out of college. Um, as you continue to progress in your career, this will be some of the stuff that sort of ends up falling off your resume, um, just because you have to make space for other experiences that you have that are relevant. But when you're getting, when you're looking for entry level roles, it's very important that companies are gonna wanna see what things you're participating in um, outside of your education, general educational path. And then, also put your skills on your resume. So to the extent that you're familiar with programming languages, put those on there. Um, I think you can look online to sort of assess whether your programming language skills are like intermediate, beginner, expert, based on what things you know and what you can do um, in the programming language. But sort of try to give a general feel of how good you are. I don't, please don't say you're an expert in Excel. If you're not an expert in Excel, they're going to find out like first, <laughs> first day on the job, they'll give you something and you're, it, it'll show if you don't understand. And then some roles where the technical um, experience is very important, they will do a technical interview with you where they will like you'll get on a call and they'll say, okay, show me, like share your screen, 
show me how you do X, Y, and Z in Excel, or show me how you do this in Python or R. And if you, if you don't know how to do that stuff, you're going to, like, they'll know. So um, don't say you're an expert. If you're not an expert, be honest. But if you're really good at something, put it on there. Also, that's an opportunity to put other things that will help you stand out. So um, on here, I have French in it, as an example. If you're applying for a global sort of role where you'll need to communicate with you know, people across the country that speak different languages, knowing those different languages could be a plus. So if you have things that make you unique, use that as an opportunity to put those on there. And again, this is all based on space, right? If you've had five actuarial jobs and you need to sort of be able to highlight different things you learned in all those roles, you might not have space for, you know, skills. Just try to highlight it in the, in the, um, in the role where you most use that skill, sort of, if you don't have space to put it, you know, somewhere else on your resume. Does anybody have any questions? Let's pause here. You can raise your hand to ask a question or um, just drop it in the chat. I think that's a good point about participation and leadership because that was something I struggled with when I was coming out of college on how to actually like word that um, in comparison to like activity or volunteerism. Um, so that's a really good point as well. If you're like a leader on campus involved in multiple organizations, that's a good tidbit too. But yes, yeah, so if you all have any questions whatsoever, um, I know sometimes people like to wait till the end to ask questions because they want to see the whole presentation. Um, but uh, this is a good time to ask questions too. All right, if nobody has questions, I'll hand it off to Erin. Thank you, Kyle. Next slide, please. So the do's of a resume, right? And I'll start from the bottom of this of keeping it short and sweet, right? So just reiterating, um, especially if you're going, if you're uh, assuming you all don't have a lot of full-time uh, work experience to keep it to a page or less, right? If you look at it from a perspective of a hiring manager, you are one of several resumes, right? And so, you know, think of the purpose of the resume. The resume, the purpose of the resume is just to get an interview at the end of the day, right? And then that's where you can really let your personality and everything um, else shine. So the first nine to 10 pages of this deck gave you the framework of, of what should be included, who you are, what's your objectives, what's your GPA, your, you know, exam success, um, and the two to four bullets is, is key, right, with the tense. So, uh, and that goes on to the first part. When you get to your two to four bullets, be as detailed as possible. Again, we run across several resumes, so when you begin to use cliches and everything else, it can do more harm than good. Just get more specific um, with it. If you let a team of two, let, let us know that you led a team of two. If you led a team of 30, let us know, right? We need something to dif differentiate you from the other stack of resumes. Um, we're in the digital world, right? So pages, <laughs> digital pages of resumes uh, that we're doing. So anything that we can glean uh, some insight into who you are as a person will only um, help, which also, you know, if you don't have a lot of relevant work experience, which I did not coming out of college. I had no internships, right? Um, but I was part of clubs, right? Highlight those leadership opportunities that you did. Highlight those clubs that you were on. As a hiring manager today, I know what to look for as far as transferable skills. I'm looking for well-rounded individuals. I don't care if you had five exams passed, right? If you had five exams passed, that may be a red flag that you're here, uh, you know, so focused here, it may not fit culturally, uh, into the organization. So we want to see how well-rounded you are. Um, and also on your interests, right? Sometimes that can peak interest where we are humans on the other side. So just kind of see 
uh, have an opportunity to put interest if space allows, right? Because first and foremost, a page or less, and just kind of highlight what you think is will best represent you uh, within that one page of real estate that you have. In that same vein of thought, uh, next slide, please. Just very quickly, um, mm -hmm. somebody did ask a question. They sent it to me directly. Um, they said, let me pull it up, because it was an interesting question. And it had they asked it right after um, we were like, okay, and then we passed it over um, to Aaron. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're good. I'm trying to pull it up on my end if I can. There we go. Um, does a resume of two page? Does a resume of two pages, is that okay for someone with three internships? You've, you faded out for a second. Can you just repeat the question? I didn't hear it. Yes. Uh, does someone with, uh, well, does a resume of two pages, is that okay for someone with three internships? So this person has three internships. And I guess they're trying to see if it's okay to have two resume, or will have two pages for their resume. Ajana, you want to answer it? Or do you want me to? Um, I would say probably not. I would say probably still keep it to a page. You probably have a lot of information under each um, internship and different things that you did, which is good. Try to make it more succinct. So try to get it to two to three short bullets for each of your experiences. And you can probably still fit it on a page. Change the font to 11 or 10. Don't go smaller than 10. Um, but change the font to make it a little smaller. So the extent that you have sort of like extra words, extra information, all of the like very, very strong, you know, take out the berries, <laughs> take out the extra words that you don't need. Try to get it down to a page. Just because as you're looking for a full, like if you're just looking for an entry level full-time role, they're just not going to read it. They're not going to get to the second page. It, it, there's just too many resumes to get through. As a point of reference, we got folks that have got 10, 15 years of experience and still submit that 15 page, I mean, that one page resume, right? So again, I would think of, skills that you got in each one and if the skills overlap just highlight it in one of them and you don't have to necessarily put it in both keep it concise two to three bullets each one and again if you have three internships and it's relevant internships you're likely going to get the interview right and that's all the person may is at that point then you're going to let your personality and everything shine once you get the interview but you may not get the interview if you're coming in with two or three um because it's just, it's it's too much. It may just be a turnoff. So I would say better safe than sorry. Uh, practice being concise, right? Which is the transferable skills when you're writing emails and everything else. Um, concise, um, but specific with your accomplishments. Hope that answered your question. That was um, very insightful for both, both answers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It feeds right into my first bullet of dump, actually, <laughs> on the next slide. <laughs> yep. So don't make your resume longer unnecessarily, right? So again, just as a point of context, right? Three internships, I'm assuming summer internships, eight to 10 weeks. Combine that 30 weeks, people that got 10 years of experience are still able to condense that experience down to one page, right? So it's just all context and stuff. So get it down um, to a page, strongly recommended. Fancy fonts, graphics, inserts. This is not a time to show that you have a skill set in graphic design, right? It's just um, be concise and, and, and you know, I'm not going to say specify certain fonts out there, right? But we all know the top three to five that are standard fonts and all the other ones that are not, right? Um, if you are struggling uh, to fill a page, right, that's probably when you want to go with the objective and your skills and your clubs and everything. If you're the person with the three internships, you're probably going to skinny down some of that 
and move from a 14 font down to a 10 font. Play with the fonts of which ones are just naturally smaller, but still in that three to five standard fonts and everything else, right? And additionally, industry lingo. Um, just don't use it, right? If it's widely known, people outside of the industry, uh, feel free. I'll still possibly even stay away from it altogether just to be safe. Um, but those are some things that you just want to be safe and not do. Fill words, making it longer than necessary, showing that you have a skill set in graphic design. This is not the place for it. Um, and just use a standard resume uh, fonts uh, and formats. Um, and again, the purpose, what's the purpose of the resume? To get the interview, right? So let's just kind of keep that purpose uh, in mind. Any other questions on the next slide? Cover letters. Um, so if you uh, struggle to get it down to a page, but yet you still succeed it, this is an opportunity to really elaborate on your experience in the cover letter. Um, and not necessarily related to the cover letter, but if you were to, or I guess it is, if you were to write a cover letter, um, when you're applying to a job, they have they have a description, but then they have this, you know qualifications and desired skills, right? You should use those qualifications and desired skills as your cheat sheet to tailor your resume if you're not doing a cover letter, or definitely to highlight those desired skills on the cover letter. Us as the employer, we're telling you what we're looking for, right? So if we're looking for ABC. Don't force down X, Y, Z down our throat. I mean, you could do that during the interview, but not on your 30 second to a minute opportunity of a hiring manager skimming your resume com with you compared to others, right? So it's just kind of giving you context and a, and, a, and, a, and a perspective of the other person on the other side, right? So just kind of use the cheat sheet that they're giving you and then tweak your resume in order to get the interview. Right. And then all of that. So with cover letters, they definitely don't hurt um, in the process. Um, so use it uh, to your advantage. Right. Always keep it professional. No personal details. Um, and that's it's just another opportunity to elaborate uh, beyond the one page resume. Next slide. Or I, I think that's the end of our resume section. So I think okay. it's a good opportunity to pause again before I go into uh, a WTW spiel, which I would love to do, but wanted to pause one more time for, for resumes before I, I, I talk about all the great things that Willis Towers wants in WTW. Yes. Um, I did get a couple of questions. Someone asked, what are the standard resume font types? Because I know there's like Time New Roman. I love Times New Times Roman. Times New Roman. Aereo, Aereo Narrow. Um, yeah, Calibri. Those are the ones that come to mind. You can never go wrong with Times New Roman or, or, or if I'm even pronouncing Aereo correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the two to be safe for me. Or three, Aereo Narrow, Aereo, and Times New Roman. Font sizes 10 through 14. 10 14. And the last thing was format. Some does format matter? That's what it says. So I'm I don't know if it's like a regular, like the, I guess just how it looks to like does the way that um, your resume look matter to oh. you all? <laughs> I think they could be sort of getting at the maybe the way that it's organized. So like if you oh, yeah. have maybe skills at the bottom or skills on the side or, yeah. or like, I don't, I don't know. That would be my assumption. Does that matter to you, Aaron? He, they said yeah. yes. That's, I mean, you definitely, or I definitely see a consistent theme of resumes and when one looks slightly different, but still professional. It's like, oh, that's different. I mean, it, it's just, that's different, right? Um, but if ones that are not 
formatted correctly, it's definitely a, a ding. Um, listen, man, we got one page to assess you, right? Make sure the grammar's correct. Make sure the tenses are correct. We are looking for reasons to narrow our search down to the most highly qualified person, right? So you definitely want to put in as much energy and effort to make that one page represent you in the best light possible. Um, so yes, formats do matter. There are several uh, resume templates out on the internet to choose from. Um, make it happen. <laughs> but they do matter. And, and uh, just, just make sure it's neat, organized, and professional. I hope that answers it. They said yes. <laughs> there, you when you all can change it from send to me to send to everyone, so then they can also see it um, in the chat as well. Okay, yeah, I can. I'm blind on the side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, or should I move on for now? Going once, going twice. So, okay, we can move on. <laughs> All right. So as far as a great place to work with uh, WCW, what do we mean by that, right? So first, WCW is a great place to work. Let's state it out. Let's, to me, state the obvious. But for those that why it may not be so obvious, um, WCW is the largest employer of actuaries, right? Um, when I was growing up in my career, in order to learn to be an actuary, you know, it's a good idea to learn from other actuaries and what better place than to be with the employer with the most of them, right? There definitely becomes a time in your actuarial career profession where it's more art than science, right? Early on, you're definitely going to learn the science or the technical skills. Uh, but at some point, you're going to transition to the art uh, and assumption setting or whatever you're doing, right? And that's definitely more art and science where it will help to pick the brain of other actuaries, for lack of better terms, right? As, as you kind of develop your skill set and your comfort level with whatever risk that you're dealing with in the actuarial profession, um, right? Um, colla collaborative culture, um, absolutely. We have different networks and everything within WTW. Um, and extremely collaborative. You have an opportunity to be client-facing interaction. We're consultants at the end of the day. So if you are the personality that thrives to be sitting behind a computer uh, 60 hours a week with no uh, interaction, at some point that may be a detriment to you in a consulting firm as W2W, just being honest. Uh, but if you're someone that thrives in, in that setting, uh, once you prove uh, yourself with the technical skills and we groom you to be a consultant, then yes, that that is the goal uh, to be client facing, right? And alluded to uh, the bottom right ability to network internally uh, and externally with flexible career um, opportunities. We consult in a lot of different lobs, line of business, LOBs, line of businesses, right? And each one has its own set of technical skills um, an expertise in networks, essentially, right? And so with that, uh, your career can take many paths. Um, and if you're one to, to, that likes to travel, uh, that opportunity is there um, as well. Although in our virtual setting, you don't have to if you don't want to, uh, more times than not, in my experience. So, Anjanae, uh, anything else on this slide you want to speak to about how wonderful it is to work at WTW? <laughs> um, I would just add there's something for everybody. So we do have a, a group of people that don't want to talk to clients and don't sort of enjoy that. And there we have like service centers where you sort of just get to do the technical work and you don't really ever have to talk to clients. You still have to understand what client needs are and you still have to sort of think of creative ways to address those needs. and work with your team internally. Um, but if you never want to talk to clients, surprisingly at a consulting firm, there is an option for you. You're right, and I apologize for saying that. I'm clearly biased in my client facing, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a big <laughs> organization too. out there, 45,000 
colleagues. So um, there are definitely opportunities where you don't um, have to if you don't want to. And that, that expectation is not there for sure. Next slide. Uh, graduate full-time internship opportunities. Um, so again, as an organization of 45,000 globally, um, we do have opportunities uh, for full-time and internship um, across the different uh, lines of businesses. Um, I don't know how to get that over to you at the moment, but I'm sure we can uh, figure that out. Um, towards the bottom left of the slide, we break our uh, company into two business segments, health, wealth, and career, uh, and risk and broking, uh, meaning people, challenges, right? People, health insurance, wealth, their, the wealth of that and their career. Um, and risk and broking is the risk of just uh, everything that's not a person, cyber risk, buildings, transportation, yachts. So a whole bunch of things out there that we uh, consult on for sure. Um, and each one, one, again, can take its own path. Uh, internship programs, uh, highly uh, selective and competitive, eight to 10 week program in the summer uh, time, generally speaking. Uh, there may be some fall and spring semester, just depends on the opportunity you're, you're looking at. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you will work with, uh, you know, get your foot in the door, uh, understand, uh, have a firsthand experience in understanding what WTW uh, does and realizing uh, if it's a good fit uh, for you. And you get to work by side, by, side by side by top-notch talent such as Anjane, right? So what else would you want? Anything I miss? Next slide. The application process is online um, for, for the opportunities. Uh, there will be a higher view assessment, uh, 68 interviews and two game base, um, dedicated about 30 to 35 minutes uh, for that. And in that, there will also uh, be able to attach a resume. However, the assessment is a way to express yourself beyond that one pager or that 15 to 30 minute conversation of question and answers, right? So that's our application uh, process. And once you get past that and you advance, then you may be, may be able to get to some virtual uh, interviews similar to what we're doing right now, where we can talk through a computer screen and get to know you and you can get to know us um, a little bit better as well. Next slide. Um, Aaron, really quick, are your for people who are looking for a full time, are they coming in the office to interview or still virtual for full time as well? Um, and it is specific uh, for the part that I have influence on. Short answer: No, they're not going to the offices virtual. But if they're local to Miami, um, I'll meet them in person over a breakfast or a coffee or a lunch or something um, and just take advantage of them being local. But my role is more Southeast region, so I can't meet them in Atlanta. And I'm not necessarily asking them at the folks in Atlanta, the Atlanta leadership to go out there and do that. So that's just something that I enjoy doing um, as, a, as a people person. And um, But the short answer is no, that's not the expectation. Okay. Yeah, same for, for Michigan. So let's assume same for all of WTW. If you are um, local, you want to come into the office, you can do your interview in person. If you're not local, you can still do it virtually. Um, so e either way works. And as far as opportunities, actuarial opportunities, uh, all our lives, lines of businesses, again, so, you know, people get into uh, H&B which is where I live uh, in my lab, retirement, PNC's property and casualty of life, risk and analytics and integrated global solutions, IGS is what we call that uh, for short. So each one, different labs, different risk underwriting, different teams, different locations, different skill sets, but all actuarial uh, in nature uh, and non-actuarial. Uh, we have some non-actuarial roles as, as well. 
Um, I can speak specifically to the H and B, which is where I, I live. Solid rotational programs, um, and just learning the business at the end of the day. So, again, well-rounded uh, opportunities for sure. Um, so you can learn the business um, with top-notch talent again and first-class training opportunities. Bring, were you about to ask a question? Um, yes, yeah, somebody asked um, if they're interested in working there, um, but I guess they're asking, is it possible to send over an existing resume for commentary? Um, so I guess they're out asking if my, it sounds like a resume review, um, if you all would be interested in doing that um, for some of the individuals on the call. Um, I know we have a number of resources that, um, on our IABA website as well. Um, so I don't want to put you all on the spot <laughs> either. Um, so yes, I will send you over. Um, if you want to drop the person that sent me the question, if you want to send me your email, I can also send you a number of resources that we have to offer at IABA regarding resume review. And um, hopefully that can help as well. And yeah, so I just didn't want to put them on the spot um, because they might not be doing resume review, but we do have people that does resume reviews at IABA for you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, that. I'll, be, <laughs> I'll come on and say, um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to okay. talk and chat anytime for sure. Uh, resume review? No, um, I'm good. But uh, use the <laughs> right. resources even through IAVA, your local colleges and, and universities, um, and everything else. But if you, you know, just have some fifty thousand foot questions, or if you think I would be a good mentor for whatever reason, I'm all about that all, all day long for sure. There you go. Yes, and we were talking about LinkedIn last week, so it's important that you should have a LinkedIn account. And like you said, reach out to him, um, send an invite. I would say integrate some of the things that we talked about today. If you have a question about something specific, you can send it to me on LinkedIn. If you really, really want somebody to look at your resume, I could take a quick read of it. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. But if I don't see the things integrated that we talked about, I'll be disappointed, so. So work on it first and then yes. send it over. That will be yes, and then I'll read it over. Yep. So hopefully that helps. Okay. Um, Anybody want to hop on the on the vocals instead of the typing in the chat the and chat. answer questions? <laughs> Yes, you can take yourselves off of mute and ask a question. You can turn your cameras on. Um, you know, we're here to answer any questions you might have. I know some people are a little shy. So I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, um, but yes, if you have any direct questions, you can just ask and take yourself off mute and, and all of that. And nobody has questions. Well, we're here if <laughs> you decided you want to ask one. Is it the last slide? Yep. Oh, questions. Okay. Yep. Questions. I know um, earlier this year we also did a did the boot camp. Um, we dived really in deeply into all of um, like resume reviews and everything and even offered sessions and all of that. Um, so IBA, we offer like a lot of resources um, for you all and this is just another one. Um, so even if you don't uh, wanna ask the questions on today's call, like I said, they are available um, through LinkedIn. So send an invite. Um, if you do not have a LinkedIn, check out our last YouTube video um, that we checked that we dropped last week um, to learn more about that. Uh, these are for like our future people that are watching um, as well since we're recording. 
So yeah, if you all have any questions, reach out and yeah, you have people that are around and want to provide that knowledge. So take advantage, please. <laughs> Yes, so if I'm also watching the chat as well. Yeah, if there are no questions, um, I know we said that we're closing in on an hour and everything. So I also want to make sure we're being cognizant of everybody's time as well. Um, was there anything else you all wanted to add, Ajane or uh, Aaron? Thank you for the presentation. It's really great. Thanks for having us. Integrate all these things into your resume um, and apply WTW. That would be great. We have many positions open. Um, a couple slides back was where you know our website was and information about how you could apply, things like that. Um, one question I got in the chat is what side of actuarial are you guys in? Um, I grew up in retirement. Um, I was in retirement for a little bit over three years, and then I transitioned to client management, which is not an actuarial role, um, mostly just because I wanted to try something new, try something different, and WTW has always been open to that, sort of doing whatever you're interested in, there, as long as there's an opportunity. Um, so yeah, grew up in retirement on, which I... Oh, maybe I should say for those who aren't familiar is the Society of Actuaries. So I'm pursuing my ASA. Um, but now I, I don't know what, what my next sort of venture will be as far as like actuarial roles. Aaron? I grew up in the uh, H&B Health and Benefits. Um, yeah, I got my ASA. I did not have my FSA, so Society of Actuaries. Um, and the reason I landed there is because they were the first one to give me a job. So, And I haven't looked back. I've enjoyed it, for sure. Well, yeah, it. I feel like a lot of the time, sort of what, where you end up actuarially is just like where your first job whatever your first job is, is sort of what you end up doing. And as you grow your, and grow your career, when I attend actuarial conferences and everything else, I may attend sessions that may not be geared towards my, the health and B, but towards PNC or some other uh, businesses. And it's, it's interesting, right? And you'll start to learn the underlying is all the same. It's just the nuances that get you to go into the different lives but math is math at the end of the day it sure is okay that math is hard that you all do <laughs> <laughs> but yes well that was a good question any more questions um it can even not even just be about resumes it could be about the speakers as well that are here presenting today um because that was a great question to ask, you know, about you all. So um, you can also ask those type of questions as well. Um, and that might even be a great, you know, conversation started when you do reach out to them. Like, hey, I was on, you know, the call and I wanted to learn more about your career and, and everything. And Ajane sounds like we're both in the same boat. We're really trying to grow and develop in, in our roles and our positions and you know, if you're in that type of boat as well, then that might be somebody that you definitely want to talk to uh, to learn about a little bit more about that and talk to Aaron if you want to learn more about what he does. And he's been there and it sounds like it's been a great time. I hope to be at IABA for a while myself. So I will probably talk to you more about that in the future, about longevity and all of that stuff. So definitely just tap in with these people and um, connect. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, does WTW provide internships for international students? Um, we do. For the the there are roles that support international students. You have to you have to sort of when you're looking at roles, um, it's 
it's because some businesses do and some businesses don't and some locations do and some locations don't. So as you're looking for roles, it'll say clear, clearly in the job description whether or not um, it's a role that will support an international student. I'm just curious, is it a specific phrase or something in the job description? Because that, I don't know. Sorry, say it again. Do you know off the top of your head, is there a specific phrase or whatever in the job description that should be there that clearly identifies if it's international or not? I'm just curious. I, don't um, know. I think it says something about like, you know, like sponsorship being available for the role. Don't okay. quote me. <laughs> That sounds okay. about right. Um, but yeah, they'll probably mention something about sponsorship and, you know, offering it. Yeah, so hopefully that answers, answered your question as well. So yes, WTW, since they have a lot of great positions, it seems like a lot of room for growth and exploration of what you really want to do. So definitely um, the website is, uh, on this PowerPoint and the recording will be available later. Uh, well, tomorrow it will be available. So um, all of that information will be there. And I'll also be sending out um, a follow-up email to everyone that was on the call, um, just so that you, know, you have that information as well. So um, I think there are no more questions because I know um, we're at 6.01 at the moment. Uh, and like I said, I want to be cognizant of everybody's time. So um, yes, if you all have any more questions, reach out to them through LinkedIn. Um, the recording will be available tomorrow. And like I said, I'll be sending out messaging more about that. And you can find more information on our social media platforms. Um, IBA, uh, we are available on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So we're everywhere. Um, and we're also having our virtual career fair October 11th for 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this was a great way to prepare you all for that as that is also virtual. And you know, you'll be using your resumes to really just connect with people um, during that time. So if you all have any questions for me, uh, reach out to me at m.colvin at blackactuaries.org. Um, and yeah. Thank you all for being on the call today. Um, I think that's it. So if you all need anything from me, like I said, just reach out.